Hi folks, today is September 3rd, 2010. You're watching Ugly Flexo and my name is Frank Burgos. Today I want to talk about the BCM. Okay, Here in the US we, uh, we talk about analogs volume and BCM and we throw that term around pretty loosely I think and in most cases we use it as a kind of frame of reference. We know that process jobs are printed with about 1, 1.2 BCM uh, then line work goes up from there, 3 to 4 BCM, and then when you're coating heavy solids and that sort of thing, you're going up in the area of 8 and 10 BCM. And so we, we kind of understand that. Uh, but, but, but what does a BCM look like? You know, what is a BCM? We're going to take a little look at that, and then we're going to take a look at uh, wet ink film thickness, and from there, we're going to actually calculate uh, theoretical ink consumption based on analogs volume in BCM and I know a lot of you have asked me about that in the past and uh, I've developed calculators uh, that calculate that and that sort of thing but but I think that this is going to be it'll cover some basics some fundamental issues but I think it'll also go into some areas that uh, a lot of you may have questions about okay so let's start off by you know what is a BCM <clears throat> what is a BCM you've all heard it uh, a BCM is one billion cubic microns, okay? So right off the bat, when we talk about cubic, we know that we're talking about volume, all right? So, so, so let's prepare ourselves for that. Let's, let's make a little cube here, all right? So at some scale, a BCM is going to look something like that, all right? One billion cubic microns, okay? Now, what is a micron? A micron is a one millionth of a meter. There are one million microns in a meter, okay? So it's a unit of, of length. Now, so if we have a BCM, we have one billion cubic microns, we can look at it like this. Here's our BCM again. And let's write out a billion cubic microns numerically. So I've got one, nine zeros, and a billion. Alright, so we've got one billion microns and the symbol for micron is mu m and by the way we use the term micron it's not officially correct the uh, correct term is micrometer but it, every, I always use microns all my friends use microns so I'm going to use micron in this discussion but that's why the symbol for it is micrometer okay so and cube so that's that's the numerical way to express one BCM one billion cubic microns okay so, but uh, volume has three dimensions. There's length, there's width, and there's height. So, uh, just by looking at a billion, I can tell that there's 1,000 microns in this direction. There's another 1,000 microns. In this direction, and then in height, there's another thousand microns. Okay, just intuitively I figured out that, okay, if we've got one billion cubic microns, uh, we could take a thousand microns times a thousand microns times a thousand microns, and that'll end up at being one billion cubic microns, okay? So, so far now we know that a, a BCM is a cube whose volume is 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000 microns, okay? But now, now we're going to get to the point where we actually can start to visualize a BCM. It just so happens that uh, 1,000 microns, one of these dimensions, equals one millimeter, okay? There are a million microns in a meter. There are a thousand millimeters in a meter. Therefore, there are a thousand microns in a millimeter, okay? And that's how I kind of deduce that. So, lo and behold, at the end of the day, here's what a BCM looks like. 
okay? 1 BCM equals 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter cube, okay? So now you can finally just get an idea, have it visualize that a BCM in volume is about the thickness of a dime in all directions. So it's a tiny little cube, okay? So that's a BCM, all right? All right. So now the next question is, well, if I'm using an analog roll of a certain given uh, number of BCMs, how thick is that film of ink that I'm laying down on my substrate, okay? So let's have a look at that. Now, when we, when we talk about analogs volume here in the U.S. and some other areas, we usually use BCM per square inch. So let's take the basic analogs of one BCM per square inch, okay? In this discussion, so that the math is easy, we'll look at an analogs roll whose, whose volume is one BCM, one BCM per square inch. Okay, so that would look something like this. All right, this is a square inch. So from here to here is one inch. And from here to here is one inch. All right. So now we've got our square inch. We're going to see how thick is a BCM on this. Well, it just so happens that there are 25,400 microns per inch. Okay? That's just a mathematical conversion you can look up. There are 25,000 microns or micrometers in an inch. So therefore, if we have 25,400 in this direction and 25,400 in this direction, taking one inch by one inch being 25,400 microns and 25,400 microns, and we do the math, my calculator, uh, let me get my calculator. Okay, got my cal okay, got my calculator. Uh, so twenty-five thousand four hundred square equals six hundred forty-five million one hundred sixty thousand square microns. Microns square. Okay. So in this bottom area of one inch. What we've got is 645,160,000 uh, microns squared, all right? So now, but here's the thing. We want to figure out how thick that is, okay? One BCM, well, that's one billion microns cubed. So if we, so if that's the volume we have in a BCM, what we need to do is divide the total volume by the area and it'll tell us the height of that square inch, the film thickness of that square inch, the height of it for 1 BCM. So we take that 1 million, we divide by 645 million, 160,000 microns cubed, and what we get is... We get 1.553 zeros and a 31, so we get 1.55 microns, okay? So what does that mean? That means that the ink film that 
the theoretical ink film thickness So now this thing, rather than just being one square inch, is a square inch, and it's uh, 155 microns thick. That's, so that's, that's 1.55 microns thick. That's very thin. A human hair, which I don't have a lot of it, but averages on the thin side uh, 17 microns and can go up 70, 100, or a little bit more microns. So this is about 170th or you know 150th of a human hair thickness. So, um, so this ink film thickness is very thin. So you've got 25 million 400,000 microns in this direction, 25 million 400 microns, uh, 25,000 sorry, 400 microns in this direction and 1.55 microns in that direction. All right? So it's amazing that ink does its job with such a thin, thin film of ink, okay? That little thin film of ink of one micron, of uh, one BCM, uh, you, you see on a substrate, on paper or on film and that sort of thing, and it's, you know, it can be opaque. Uh, but that's not all of it. I could already, you know, hear a lot of you guys saying that, wait a minute, Frank, the, uh, not 100% of that uh, volume transfers to the substrate, and that's right. So we have to factor in. This is the wet film thickness of that ink, theoretically, with no, with 100% transfer from the analog roll to the substrate. But actually, only only a part of the uh, ink transfers from the analogs to the plate, and only a percentage of that transfers from the plate to the substrate. So we've got to do a little bit more math to see how thick the wet film of ink is when it finally gets to the substrate. And the reason we say wet is because the ink is going to evaporate and it's going to lose some of its thickness and it's going to get even thinner still. But we're going to calculate the approximate uh, wet film thickness that we're going to print with a 1BCM analog roll in a solid plate, okay?